a dropper loop setup with two hooks, okay? And the weight will vary depending on what the conditions are like on the water. If you don't understand uh, the benefits of dropper loops, you can see that uh, I can make my weights and my hooks completely interchangeable. Although with uh, perch, I just use uh, the same size hook everywhere. We'll get to that. But um, when fishing, I'll start out typically with three or four ounces in the winter when the surf is often four and a half feet or, or greater. And um, I've done some experimentation on um, weight types, including using coin sinker weights and these pyramids. I'm gonna leave this out. And um, I definitely prefer the pyramid weights. I, I feel like the pyramids hold better on the water and uh, I can tell when my line's moving. Um, with these coin sinkers like this, I think the water gets underneath them and they push around and you can't quite tell very easily. When these roll, you can feel this happening. And I like to put um, swivels on all of mine um, because even though I have a swivel on the top that connects to my main line, I just like redundancy. Uh, I don't want these two hooks spinning in the water when a perch might be looking at my bait or my lure. So I'll have um, like three or four of these with me in the field when I go on a trip uh, in case I snap a line or something weird happens. Somebody else with me might. Um, I'll, I'll use weights anywhere from one ounce to five ounces depending on conditions. Uh, in the video from yesterday, I was using basically three to five ounces. Uh, four and five are more, more, more appropriate. Um, these are the hooks I like to use. Uh, these are bait holder hooks, which means they'll have a, a barb on the shank, which kind of helps a little bit with uh, holding your artificials or even real bait in place. They're not perfect. And the, the, the artificials I like to use, uh, the scented artificials are from are the gulp line, the shrimps, the two inch sandworms, you can buy a bucket of sandworms and then just pinch pieces off. I believe that surf perch fishing is about, is a majority scent uh, more than it is sight. Um, and I think that's why people have a harder time when the surf gets bigger. I don't think your scent is dispersed as well. Um, and they can't locate your bait as easy. So what I also like to do is, um, since these gulps are um, notorious for, um, this isn't gold. Notorious for falling off the hook easily or just falling apart. I also put these fish bites. I cut strips of these off. And this uh, chartreuse color uh, also is a visual attractant. I think that helps in the bigger surf. These kind of melt on your line and just disappear after a while. You cut these off with some snips in the field. If you're running a Carolina rig, there's a couple of artificials you might think about. You can also run the gulp on the Carolina rig. I'll have some swivels. This is basically the terminal tackle I'm pointing on here. And um, on these hooks, uh, I'm using the South Bend monofilament. And I would probably go higher in, um, as far as strength, but um, the eyes of these hooks are pretty narrow when I use these dropper loops. And it's a little difficult unless you're gonna snell it and build your leaders differently, which you can, um, to fit. Um, anything more than 15 to 17 pound line through there. Um, so that's just a tip on the terminal gear. Um, as far as reels and stuff, um, and rods um, for a surf perch, I have this Daiwa Alexa 3500. Um, I've had this for years for other reasons. I didn't buy it for surf perch. And um, it, it's been okay. It's not, it's not the best reel on the planet, but it gets the job done. And I have this cheap um, FibLink Amazon Special, 10 foot medium or medium heavy. This one's rated to throw um, uh, one to five ounce weights. Um, I don't really like the grip on this, although it has, I don't like this kind of um, texture here. The actual blue stuff on top is okay. I'm just not a fan of this texture. I like cork or, or just 
this EVA foam better. Here's another setup I have. Here's another setup I have. This is a Cast King Capstan Elite 4000. 4000 size is all you need. Um, and I have, I'm running 30 pound braid on most of my setups. And this is a St. Croix Triumph medium power. It's braided to throw up to four ounce uh, of weight. And uh, yeah, I have liked this reel. I haven't had a lot of time with it, but it's, it's uh, you can see it on the internet. People are starting to give it good marks. Uh, for initial use, it's really good, it's smooth. It's supposed to be IPX6 waterproof. Um, I haven't tested that, I haven't dunked it or anything. I don't really like to dunk my reels. But if you're thinking about, uh, you know, something okay, this is supposed to have 30 pounds drags, 30 pounds of drag, it's okay. Now, a lot of people from the Northwest where I live are salmon fish, they're doing salmon fishing. And so um, they'll have like an ugly stick and I have a heavy weight ugly stick ready to throw up to a one and a half ounce. This is a salmon steelhead rod. And uh, I really like these ugly sticks. You get value for your money. And I got a pen, uh, Spin Fisher 4500. I really like the Spin Fisher reel. Uh, I've had this for years. And this is only a 20 pound line. I just like going 20 to 30 pound because I get less wind knots. Sometimes you get a wind knot and then if you're, if that happens in the air, and your line still hasn't hit the uh, the bottom or the surf, you might actually get a wind knot here and break your main line. So um, I, I like to beef up on the on the line. I don't like to uh, skimp on that. These are just some tips to uh, help you get started if you're thinking about entry level surf perch fishing. Anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. Seven years ago, I shot the bar in my kayak with Todd Schweitzer and we were fishing for kings. He got one that day. But right now, I'm gonna hang out right here.
six foot. Eight four ounces. Three can get away with it in some places. But not a bad day. Trying out this cast king reel. Is it Capstan Elite? It worked pretty pretty good. It's supposed to be an IPX7 sealed reel. I didn't actually dunk it. 